So I've covered a lot of detail on this channel around CO2 lasers as well as diode lasers. And uh, we've built many projects and you can see certainly what, what they are capable of. But one laser type I haven't covered on this channel is one of these. This is a fiber laser. It's an entry level laser from Commarker, the B4. And in this video, I'll review it. I'll take it through its paces and you can see whether this is a laser you're gonna want in your shop or not. Now, if you're coming from the diode laser world, the thing you're gonna notice most is this thing is blistering fast. And with that, we'll get started. Hey, how's it going everybody? Steve here, welcome back. Now, Commarker reached out to me a while ago and asked me if I wanted to test their new B4. This is their entry-level fiber laser. Uh, this particular uh, sample that you'll see in this video is a 20-watt fiber laser, but these are available as high as 60 watts. Now, one of the things you have to understand with a fiber laser as an entry-level laser is it's not going to be a $500 laser. This is not the diode laser market. Uh, entry level in the fiber market is $2,300, $2,400 uh, in US dollars. So they tend to be a lot more money, but some of the things they can do are things you can't do with, with either a CO2 or a, certainly a diode laser. And I'll walk you through some of those differences. And with that, let's take a quick fly over here. So when your laser arrives, it'll come in a big box like this and you open it up and there's a bunch of things inside. There's a 200 millimeter lens, a set of goggles, a bunch of samples, a foot pedal if you're doing mass production, and then the laser head itself, the control electronics in the middle on the base, and a pedestal to hold it all together, uh, as well as some documentation. Now mine also came with a rotary attachment, which is basically a chuck on a, on a stepper motor plus a controller for it. This just plugs right into the back of the laser and there's really not nothing else you have to do. So once you get the laser together, you'll see that uh, on the front panel, there's a power switch, an emergency stop button, which is important, and then two buttons for up and down. Now there's also a manual raise and lower of the laser if you want maybe precision. Uh, uh, flipping around back here, you can see the laser is on a fairly long cable between it and the controller. And that's because you can remove the laser and use it remotely. There's a couple of connectors here as well. One is for the uh, rotary and the other is for, a, for the foot switch. I won't talk a lot about the foot switch here, but basically you can configure it so that every time you touch the switch, it will restart the job that you have in Lightburn or EasyCAD. So, uh, it's fairly simple. Uh, I don't do mass production, so uh, I won't talk a lot about it here. So the only real thing you need to do with the laser is control the focus and you can use those up and down buttons on the front panel as well as the knob I mentioned. And all you have to do is bring those three laser dots into a single dot in the center and you're in focus and you're ready to go at that point. Okay, so I'll start with my standard dog photo here and you can see it's in progress. This is real time. Now, the thing you're going to notice, of course, is that this laser is so much faster than either a CO2 or diode laser, and that's because it's a Galvo laser. So rather than having heavy gantries and laser modules to move around, all it has to do is move two mirrors inside the laser to steer the beam around, and you can see the output there. That's what, exactly what it's doing. Top speed here is about 15,000 millimeters a second, which is substantially faster, again, than those other two types of lasers. And when you get this right, the results look spectacular, and that's because the laser spot size here is about 45 microns so 0.045 millimeters uh, with the 110 millimeter lens now if you're using the 200 millimeter lens you get twice the roughly twice the work area uh, at 200 millimeter square but then the spot size goes up to 0.065 and i'll say that's gigantic but it's still roughly about the same size as a diode laser at that point so uh, so the specs are really good. You can see the output looks fantastic. Now, next I tried to print uh, some business cards and this is uh, what I have on the back of my business cards because I have two-sided cards. And uh, what it's doing here is engraving a couple of QR codes in real time. Now you can see, again, this is really fast. I, I was making these on my CO2 laser and it was taking me probably two minutes to make uh, the back side of this card. And here you can see it was just maybe 20 seconds, uh, very, very quick. Uh, one of the new materials that you can engrave here that you can't with either of the other two types of lasers is aluminum. And uh, here I'm just doing a, a speed versus power test. Now these lasers also have uh, an additional uh, facet, we'll say, uh, which is frequency. And 
Uh, you can also, in Lightburn at least, you can also do this kind of test, material test, where you do power versus frequency or frequency versus speed. So you can see the effects of what they do. Uh, when in doubt with some of these new materials that you probably haven't worked with before, uh, always run one of these uh, material tests and you'll get a kind of a feel for uh, how the uh, laser behaves with that kind of material. Now I had these two inch diameter uh, brass ingots that I use around my shop because they're heavy and I hold down material with them. And uh, you can see we can also engrave that, which is also something you've probably not seen before. And you actually can get some interesting color variant here that you don't normally see with something like aluminum. And when you're done, uh, we'll zoom in here and you can see the, the grid of the speed versus power looks uh, pretty interesting. So there's some things we can do with this. So with that in hand, I put together a Mayan calendar that's uh, roughly the size of the surface of one of these brass ingots. And after a fairly lengthy process, this took about uh, an hour and 45 minutes probably, uh, I ended up with something that looked like a really nice uh, result. And you can see the detail there is uh, pretty concise. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's exactly what I would expect it to be. The engraving is uh, reasonably deep as well. It's not, I don't know if I'm down the, to the 0.3 spec that uh, com marker says they can get, but I really didn't have the patience to let this run longer. So uh, the result is there. It looks actually really nice. So next I decided to tackle some stainless steel and I did a bit of a different material test here. This one is frequency versus interval time. And the hope here is that I get some annealing happening so I can get some color in the stainless. Now I seem to have succeeded because when you look at the result here, you can see there's all kinds of color in the output. And we can use that to our advantage if we really want to. We can, we can make uh, uh, colored engraving uh, on stainless. And uh, that's something diode lasers talk about, but it's not something that's predictable with a diode laser. Uh, and here you get a much better uh, control over uh, doing that annealing to get the color. So still with stainless, I took uh, one of their dog tag samples that they provided and I put my logo on one side. This is a deep engraving. That one will be about 0.3 millimeters. And then on the other side, I did the high mark approach for stainless engraving and got some really dark uh, lettering there. So still in the dog tag bag, I found these black uh, anodized, I believe they're aluminum uh, tags, and I decided to put a photo on it. Uh, little memento i have uh, some guests coming and maybe they'll get one of these and you can see the output there uh, the photo looked amazing and uh, text was nice and crisp so the last thing i wanted to do is test out the rotary attachment and you have to set set it up first in in light burn i don't honestly know how to do it in easy cad but i'm sure there's a way uh, go into uh, rotary setup select chuck and the number of steps per rotation on this are fairly high. So 12,800, you make sure you set that. You want the Y axis rotation and then the diameter of the object you're doing, which in my case is a, is a ring that came in the sample package. And uh, that's all there is to it. And once you're there, you can enable the rotary as well. Uh, in my case, I turned on the, uh, the direction reversal. Uh, and it's just a function of which side of the laser uh, you have the rotary on, uh, but you have total control. So if you do an engraving and all the lettering's backwards, you'll know what happened. You just have to either move the ro rotary around to the other side, like rotate it 180 degrees, or you can just turn this switch on and it'll rotate in the opposite direction. Now the chuck is, is configured, but I did have to make one change to it, and that was to change the springs from compression to uh, to expansion you can do either with this chuck and because i'm engraving a ring i want the pins inside the ring and pushing out to hold it rather than clamping it in and it was pretty simple it took about 20 seconds to pull the pin and swap the spring around and after that i put my ring on i did the job and i, I did a two pass engrave here so the first one was to fill and then i did a second pass to do outlining to make sure all the lettering was crisp and you can see the the job working here but when i take it off 
the lettering is uh, is very crisp. The logo looks looks nice and sharp, and uh, even the QR code it's very small. Uh, I haven't tried it to see if it actually works. I'll try it at some point. It looks a bit small for a QR code, so it probably won't work. But I thought I'd throw it on there just to give it a try, and. Uh, that, that's the rotary. Now, a fair warning here, the documentation for the rotary uh, is non-existent. So you do have to kind of feel around a bit and certainly you can look at how I configured the rotary attachment in Lightburn and do the same thing and you'll be fine. But there is very limited documentation on the rotary. Now, I realize I did say that the rotary was the last thing I wanted to show you, but I'll channel my inner Steve Jobs here and tell you there's just one more thing. And that's two and a half D engraving. So what I did was start with something that CNC people would recognize as a height map and lighter colors are in this case deeper into the material and I fed this into light burn and uh, then started an engrave and you can see it engraving here as it goes. Now it took about an hour, it's about 256 passes. This isn't a particularly big image, but when you're done, what you get is a really spectacular kind of quasi three-dimensional view of, of this horse. And uh, I can assure you, in spite of the fact that uh, Commarker says the maximum depth is 0.3 millimeters, this is far deeper than 0.3 millimeters. This is probably two millimeters. So really nice output. And if you're interested, leave a comment down below and I'll, I'll create another video if there's enough interest and show you how I did this. If you have a fiber laser, it's actually uh, really easy. Keep in mind, this is quarter inch aluminum that we're engraving into here. So I had, I had to leave you with that before uh, we talked about the pros and cons. All right, let's talk about a few things I really liked about this laser. Uh, first, it's easy to use. In 10 minutes, you can pull it out of the box, put the screws in, get it set up, and you're ready to go. Uh, now, if you're a Windows user, you also get EasyCAD 2 on the USB stick. So, uh, you know, it costs you nothing to, to run this laser from a software perspective. Now, if you're a Mac user or uh, you're just a Lightburn user in general, you can upgrade uh, Lightburn to the Galvo license, which will give you control of this laser. And that support works really well. Uh, and I can't say enough good things about it. Next on the list of things I really like is this laser is ultra fast, 15,000 millimeters a second uh, top speed. I actually tried that and it worked. Uh, and it wasn't like it was, it was stressed, it worked really well. Now that's not a normal use case probably for most people, but you can do it if you have to. Uh, and finally, uh, I didn't talk about the, this, the, the cage you can put on the front of the laser, but you can actually put a cage on the laser and detach it from the stand and then use that uh, handheld uh, if you're engraving uh, boxes or something. Now you do only have about a six foot cord between the laser and that control box at the bottom. So you don't have flexibility like you would with a laser pecker, for example, but you can do this. The only concern I have is every time they show this in the, in the comm marker uh, uh, marketing material, they always show people using these lasers with no goggles whatsoever, which is a bit of a safety issue. Now, there were some things I did have issues with on this laser. The first is there's no exhaust uh, capability. So uh, you do have to find a way to get the, the dust and fumes out of your work area. Uh, I didn't show it on camera, but the whole time I was running this laser, I had my X-Tool fume extractor running beside it. Uh, it worked very well, incidentally, so if you are looking for an option, you might want to consider that one. Uh, next on the list, I mentioned uh, documentation. Uh, I'll say politely that it's limited. In reality, especially for the rotary, it's, it's completely absent. The installation, the setup guide, however, is actually okay. So you won't have any trouble getting things set up. But uh, if you're trying to get the rotary attached, you're completely feeling around in the dark. So be prepared for that. And finally, on, on the list of cons here, uh, there is no real Mac support other than you, leaving you kind of on your own to do an upgrade of, of Lightburn. Uh, it would be nice uh, if there were an option. Now, this is more a, a slam against EasyCAD 2. Uh, there isn't an, an EasyCAD 2 option for the Mac, which is kind of too bad because a lot of people who are creators like me, like many of you, uh, we probably have, have Mac computers and uh, you know you kind of feel a bit uh, left out in the cold. 
Now, I did mention at the beginning of this video that this is an entry-level laser. Uh, in the fiber world, that generally means it costs around $2,400. It's not the cheapest laser. If you're certainly looking for uh, some of that fiber capability, you could look at, at like the X-Tool F1. Now, keep in mind, we're comparing a 2-watt diode laser to a 20-watt fiber laser. So, from a performance perspective, uh, the COM marker B4 will just completely destroy the F X-Tool F1. But if you are on a budget and you want that flexibility of, of having a blue diode laser as well as an IR laser, uh, you know, maybe, maybe that's an option for you. But from my perspective where I'm in a small business and I need to do uh, marking uh, that really rapidly or I want to create my own business cards and do it, you know, a business card a minute, uh, I, I can do that with this laser. I can't do that with, with something like an F1 or, uh, or any diode laser or CO2 laser. So from that perspective, this is a really good laser. I will put a, a, a link to the uh, X-Tool F1 video up above here. Go watch that and I'll see you over there and get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.